Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to make a Mandalorian blaster prop from the show The Mandalorian, used by the main character. And if you're interested, the patterns for this are for free on Facebook. There's a link to that below. This is the way. Okay, first thing we're going to need to do is cut out a blaster center and the blaster body outer. And the only difference is the center has a trigger and the outer doesn't. That's why those two patterns are kind of mashed into one. I also took my Dremel rotary tool with a medium grit sanding head and just kind of rounded out the outside here on the outside pieces. So it'll give it a bit more of a finished look. And I'm gonna layer these three like that and glue them together. But I'm actually not gonna use contact cement for once. I'm gonna use some Gorilla Super Glue because it will provide a less flexible and more stiff bond, and it's also faster. Everything seems to be good. It's all nice and straight. Next, I'm going to take my Dremel rotary tool and just kind of even everything out and smooth everything on it. All right, all I really did was just square everything off a little bit and I'll put a groove in on either side. One over here goes all the way through. This one's just like partially. All right, for the barrel, I have some half inch uh, C PVC pipe, not half inch PVC. Half inch PVC is actually, for whatever reason, lar uh, reason larger than the C PVC. But this, is going to be the barrel and I cut it about two inches longer than the end of this so that I have something to glue the two bands and I don't know what the actual front of the blaster is called maybe a barrel shroud I don't know I know it's not a suppressor because it's a blaster but yeah before I can glue this on though I need to sand it up so that I can vinyl dye it and also so that the glue will stick better on it
Okay, I super glued on the barrel and I filed from here down just a little bit flat so I'd have a bit more surface area to actually, you know, glue this on. And now I'm going to take a couple of strips of two millimeter thick EVA foam and I cut it a third of an inch wide, which is I think about eight millimeters. I'm not sure, so if you're metric, you'll have to do the conversion on that. But I'm going to attach these with contact cement. And how that works is you put some on each surface to be bonded, and then you wait 15 minutes, and then you join the two together. And it's not the best thing to bond stuff to PVC or CPVC, but after sanding it up and considering that it's not like a weight-bearing thing, it's not load bearing in any sense. I'm just gluing a couple of foam bands on it. It should be more than adequate. That way I'm not getting super glue stuck to my fingers and I can just put these on somewhat simply. Next, you're going to need this piece here, which is the uh, flared barrel cover. And I heated this a little bit with my heat gun and give it a little curve. And then after that, put my contact cement on it. Go ahead and line it up, glue it together. this a bit more but and I did cut this end here at an angle so that it would slide a bit more easily onto there and then match up with this I try to keep all my seams on the bottom where no one is really likely to see them I'm going to go ahead and super glue this on and then sand this out a bit just to make sure it's as level as possible so I can glue the next piece on Next I have the barrel end cap which just looks like a rectangle and same thing contact cement allow it to sit for 15 minutes just glue it together and if you need to you can use a heat gun to get it more round, although I feel like I can probably just stretch this by hand a little and get it nice and round. Oh, there we go. That's pretty decent. Now I'm just to glue this to the front of this. And again, I'm trying to keep all the seams on the bottom. Okay, I contact cemented the barrel tip on here. Next, I'm going to take some scrap foam and make some impressions of this and just cut out some circles of foam just to fill this up and make it solid. Uh, I suppose it's not necessary but if something were to lay on it it would get crushed or when I'm going to get checked at a convention and they grab it uh, and squeeze it to make sure it's not metal I don't want them to smash it into oblivion. If, they, if it's solid at least they can feel oh it's not anything I have to worry about but not totally smash it to death. Okay, I took six circles of 5mm EVA foam, but I went ahead and super glued them in layer by layer. So this is now nice and solid. All right, next I cut out my front sight pattern piece from 5mm EVA foam. And as you probably imagine, that's gonna go on the front. All right, next thing I'm going to put on is going to be the right side L pattern piece. And I used contact cement for that. And it's going to line up uh, 
just like that. Next, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and put some straight, uh, straight cuts about a millimeter and a half or so apart uh, down to about here. Next, I'm going to use my heat gun on high. Just go over this real quick and get these cuts to spread open. Like that. And then I use my Dremel to round and angle this part off here underneath the right L piece that I just attached and heated. Next, I'm going to glue in the right D pattern piece. It's going to fit in there just like that. Actually, a little bit up. All right, next I cut out the five millimeter EVA foam pattern piece that's labeled right port. I don't really know what else this is called. I'm gonna glue that in right there. All right, next I have the right port filler, which is just two millimeter EVA foam. I'm gonna put some super glue inside on each side of this in the bottom. And once I do that, I'm gonna just basically shove this in there, curl it over, and push into place like that, if that makes sense. Okay, I have this Playside Creations EVA foam shapes. I basically just took the smallest circle and they're two millimeter EVA foam and I heated it so that it domed up now I'm going to super glue it right there. Okay, for the next part, I don't actually have a pattern piece, but I'm just going to show you how I'm going to make it. Okay, so I just ground a notch into the foam, and then I'm just going to cut as squarely as possible around this notch. How this looks, I need to trim this up a little bit. Okay, so you have this piece with a curve in the bottom, and the curve is going to go like that on there. Next, we're going to make the rear sight, and for that you're going to need two sight outside pieces that are cut out of 5mm, one sight inside piece, which is also cut out of 5mm, and then two 2 mm pieces, or two 2 millimeter pieces from the outside sight cover. Now, this is going to go in the center, shock shock, it's the middle. And when this gets glued in, there's going to be an offset with these overlapping. 
you want the back of this to come together even and then these are going to go on the outside. Okay, the next piece I'm going to put on is the top rail, and it just looks like a rectangle. It's going to get glued right there in the center, and it's going to get cut lines in it just like I did down here, and he did the same way. Okay, now that the main rear sight and all that is done, we're going to do the sight extension, and I also cut a small circle. I basically took one of these and cut it down, heated it a little bit, and glued it on to be like a faux adjustment. I don't know exactly what this is or is supposed to be. I kind of feel like they took uh, two different sights and just kind of kit bashed them, but the number one piece for the sight extension is three millim or sorry, two millimeter EVA foam. And the number two piece is five millimeter. And I did cut the top edge at an angle going this way as I'm cutting. That way it has a sloped effect. And I'm gonna glue that together. Right next, you have the hammer, and I also took and super glued a very small rectangle of uh, three millimeter EVA foam onto the five millimeter that I use for the hammer. And for the thumb piece here, it's just a rectangle, but you're going to put contact cement on both of the ends so that you can line them up. stick them together and make the circle that's going to glue into here like that and the hammer will then glue into the blaster itself. the left D pattern which is actually just the exact same as the right D pattern you just flip it over and that's going to sit about a quarter inch or so in eh, more like a third of an inch and then you're going to put in your left uh, port which is similar to the right but you'll notice uh, one end is pretty much just as thin as it is on top on the end, little end, other end it's a little thicker you're going to want to put the little thicker end towards the front and it should be about a quarter inch away from this Okay, next thing there's no pattern piece for. You just take some two millimeter EVA foam and cut it about two and a half millimeters wide. And then that is gonna be cut to the length to go straight down the center like that. And then take two more pieces of it, cut a half inch wide, and those will go on top.
Okay, next piece as well, no pattern. I just took some 2mm EVA foam and cut it about 2 millimeters wide. And that is going to start up here, about an eighth of an inch from the front, and run about an, uh, sorry, about a tenth of an inch from the front, and run about an eighth of an inch along the bottom. And it's a stop right where the curve starts. I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. Okay, next thing was a little rectangle of 5mm EVA foam that I put on the end here. I just super glued it on. And the next actual pattern piece is this one that I labeled the teardrop tab. And I'm contact cementing that on. I'm just going to wrap it around this like that. And then press the tab down. I went ahead and glued on the final pieces, which is the release. And there's a pattern for that. And on the curved part, it goes up here. It's sitting kind of at an angle, somewhat down. Then I cut a very small circle of EVA foam. There's not a pattern for that out of two millimeter. And then another little rectangular tab piece out of five millimeter so that it would act like an actual functional thing if it were real, which it's, I mean, not. But now we can move on to the grips. Okay, I finished sanding this so that both sides are angled now, and this has a scallop there all the way back, and this one only goes in right there. And no, I did not sand it this smooth. I actually used the heat gun and got this hot, and then just smoothed it out with my finger as much as possible. But it was tricky to use a Dremel to do this, and I kind of use a Dremel a lot, so keep that in mind. Okay, for the grips, you're going to need two of the grip number one pattern and that's in two millimeter and two of the grip number two and five millimeter and you probably imagined this is going to go on first and this on second now i did cut this at as much of an angle as i could on top i'm going to glue them on like that okay all the pieces are now on now i need to go through and sand this up and round it all off with my Dremel. Okay, a few finishing details after I rounded out both sides of the grips, angled this into the number one. I took some screws I had laying around and I put some super glue 
uh, into the hole after I jammed the screw in and then pulled the screw out and super glue and shoved it back in so it's glued in place. I took a ballpoint pen and put some dots based on reference photos that I found by Googling, including up here on the site as well, over there, and then this circle there. I don't know why, but yeah. And then I took and scored this angled line. <sighs> Get the dog hair off there. Scored this angled line into the top of the site here, uh, the front site. I don't know why it's there, but it's there. Okay, so before I can seal this up with Mod Podge, I need to actually turn the barrel black. And to do that, I'm going to use some Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric Specialty Coating. This is a dye, not so much a paint. If you've ever painted plastics with spray paint and like just maybe chipped it a little with your fingernail, the paint comes right off. Well, it won't come right off with this stuff. So... I'm going to use this stuff here to spray up this barrel. Okay, I heated and put the wood grain in it. I'm going to reseal, well not reseal, but re-dye this black so it's all one consistent color again. Alright, off camera I applied two coats of Mod Podge uh, gloss until I got rid of that, you know, sort of pocked foam look. And whenever I apply it, I just try to stay in the direction for each piece. For example, I'm going this way on the end and lengthways on this. On the grip, I didn't actually put much. And then after I sealed it, I did actually spray another coat of gloss over it, just so it looked a little better. And now I'm gonna start painting it up. And first thing I'm gonna do is a grip with some brown, and then I'll seal that with some Mod Podge, since the brown is acrylic and will come off much easier than any sort of oil paints I may use. And then I'm going to use some metallic paints and just paint the whole thing up.
Okay, I used some moccasin brown that I dry brushed very thinly. If you put it on too thick, it comes out a very light tan. But I dry brushed that very thinly on the grip. Then I covered that in a layer of Mod Podge just to seal that in since it is just acrylic craft paint and will probably wear off with use if I don't. And then for this part of the muzzle and this tab here and this, I used titanium gold. I used Model Masters gold for this actual part here. And I used Model Masters silver chrome on this. And then to give this more of a blued look, I just brushed on a wash that I made from some black acrylic paint and blue and some transparent gray airbrush paint and some other stuff just to give it kind of a blued look. And that's going to be pretty much it for the hand painting. Now I'm going to move on to rub and buff to get some details uh, as far as weathering on like the end here and on the body itself. Okay, before we wrap everything up, one thing I do want to go over is you'll notice I did not put an orange tip on, on this. You're going to have to do that in order to take it, like, outside your house in public, like, let alone to a convention or anywhere else. So that's something to keep in mind, and I will have to do. Most likely, I will just make a removable orange foam tip. I can just slide over this. But most of the conventions where I live, the rules are if you have something that looks realistic like this, it can't be painted realistic colors. So I would have to paint this like all neon orange or neon yellow or pink or something to take it to most of the conventions anyway, so I just won't. But I can use it for photos. And if they're photos on private property, I don't have to have the orange tip. If it's somewhere that's indoors or, you know, if it's out in public, I can put the orange tip on it or whatever. But yeah. That was one, one thing I wanted to mention I didn't do that does need to be done with anything that looks real so people know that it's not real if you're going to take it outside of private property. Well, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you, you all enjoyed it and it gave you some ideas for your own projects. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.